Okay, we're here at our Monkey Town branch uh, where we've got our cotton mouth, also known as a water moccasin. Um, this is an adult male. We just need to give his cage a bit of a cleaning and stuff, so I just thought to make a video, check this guy out. Now, being in South Africa, we don't have anti venom, we don't have crow fab for a bite from the snake. They are. I've read you know, a lot of information about them. A lot of people say it's a hemotoxic venom, which is blood. Blood thinning stops your blood from coagulating and bleeding out. And there's also a lot of tissue destruction. So it's a pretty much combination of hemo and cytotoxin. Cytotoxin being the tissue destruction part. Now these snakes have got uh, heat pits, so they can pick up the temperature of my blood see you know where exactly where to bite if they want to get you um, so we've got to be very careful with these snakes that's why we go with the double hooking method so you can see he's hissing a little bit and you know, he vibrates his tail a lot okay. whoa okay didn't expect that from him so you can see the inside of his mouth there that's uh, that's his warning you see there he's just like mock striking so what he's doing is he's trying to be more intimidating, he's really trying to show, hey, leave me alone. And that inside of the mouth being so white, that's where they get the name cotton mouth. Okay, so these guys eat lots of different things from like frogs, lizards, fish, possibly other snakes. We just feed now as mice, um, rats and things like that. I don't know if you guys are able to see those um, heat pits. That's why I call pit vipers. So when they start out as babies, they're quite pretty, nice colors, got more little vibrant uh, colors. But uh, as they get a bit older, they get a little dirty looking. They also let go of this horrible musky smell, which, uh, you know, is quite a deterrent. It doesn't smell like something nice to eat. So this guy, he is quite a feisty character. Obviously, just be he's scared, you know. He just wants to protect himself. He's only going to bite you because he's scared for his life. You can see he's quite chunky. So this is why you just go with the double hooking method on him. You can just have a little look at him. Move around a little. Okay, so you can see he doesn't want anything to do with me. You see, sudden movement like that gets him to turn around. He's to really defend himself again. Okay, if I come any closer, he's gonna obviously bite. Because I'm staying here, I'm out of his out of his range. Okay, see there, just moved my foot. That still gets a reaction from him. Okay, now obviously I don't want to stress him out too much, but I mean, even if he was in the wild, he would come across things more often than not and have to protect himself. So, okay, you can see he's going really crazy now. See also there, where I had the hook on his back now, he feels restrained, he feels in trouble. So he's just gonna lash out. And that's why people, you know, try and pick up a snake. They feel they can't move. They're gonna just go and strike out. Okay, so let's just move him quickly before he stresses out anymore. Okay, come here boy. He's a heavy snake. Okay, let's pop him in his tail. Okay, and I just want to grab quite far around the side. Just swivel it over. And then always just check that there's no head or anything popping out. Oh, he's still going. You can possibly see me right through the tub. <laughs> Alright, so then we're just going to go through and give his cage a bit of a clean. Like most of our cages, we've gone with our um, bioactive substrate, mixture of different soils. You can add stuff like vermiculite, peat, because you want it quite airy so that the bacteria can live in here. And when I say bacteria, I'm talking about good, healthy bacteria. So it's like a composting system, gets rid of all the bad stuff, and uh, it's working very well. I mean, this, this tank's been going over a year, and we just top up the soil and everything like that. All right. Cool. 
So bites from a cotton mouth are quite rare, but uh, obviously not impossible. A lot of tissue destruction and things like that. So it's a really nasty bite, not something you want to get involved with. And they got quite large uh, hinged fangs, kind of like our puff adders. Okay, and as you can see, this one, yeah, he's he's pretty quick to to bite. Whereas some others, you know, they can be a little more shy. Each snake, again, has got his own personality. Cool, so we're just going to give this a clean, and then we'll pop this one back. Okay, so now that the cotton mouth's nice and safely packed away, we're just going to mix the soil a bit. Because you want to keep the soil light and fluffy, you don't want to get in too compact. As I said, so that helps with the oxygen and everything like that. So we're just going to give it a little bit of a stir. You can see it's nice and light with all the moss and everything. And obviously, as you're going and you, you know, the snake defecates and you remove the bulk of that, you're going to be taking substrate out. And also, like a composting system, the, the level is going to drop down. So it's always good to just, uh, you know, check your levels and add a bit onto it. Now, you might be seeing all this wet soil. I don't know if you, some people haven't watched my other videos but uh, we have pool coated the wood here. So it's got a nice thick layer of resin on it. And uh, I went with a sort of pool coat idea. It's obviously pool coat is used in pools and things like that in fish ponds. So if it can be used for fish, which are highly sensitive, it should be no problem in this situation. And uh, you know, these cages have worked very, very well. So if you see here, we're digging down to like real mucky dirt. You can see the wood here is still absolutely perfect. There's not a mark on it. So a pool coat is a fantastic option. Obviously glass cages also great, but you can't make glass cages, you know, too large. Although it comes extremely costly as well. And the thing is, Glass is not as good an insulator as wood. So these cages have been going for a good uh, over a year, as I said. And um, the ones at our other park have been going almost four years. And they still, you know, look very well where we pull coated. Okay, so here we're just adding some leaves. All those little chochos that live in here will eat away at this sort of stuff as well as it breaks down and uh, you can add some earthworms and little pill bugs and some people even add dubia roaches but um, if there's not food for the roaches they might bother the snake it could cause stress and things like that so that's all things you need to watch out for but doing a system like this it's, it's really really cool because it's easier than newspaper I just need to pick up the mess throw it away so you might have a little bit of uh, start up which is an issue but once it's running it's really really the way to go okay so we've cleaned the glass all nice we're gonna put the snake back now shame I think it was going at me through the box almost every time I walk past it so we're going to get him settled in here, let's get his water bowl. Alright. Now, as you can see the snake, he obviously stresses a little bit. But that's only because the back of the cage is open. When uh, people are viewing him from the front, he's not bothered at all because he knows nothing ever comes from the front. So he's not too stressed or anything like that. Okay. Yeah. See how he means business. I'm surprised he's not actually gaping much. Giving his sort of warning. Okay, boy. There you go. Set him nicely on the perch so he can get a little more reach at me. <laughs> okay. So there he is. Got some... 
nice comfort in his new home. You can see just above him we've got a, a cage there. Okay, and that uh, that cage there's uh, got a heat emitter in it, and you can see just underneath him a little grey wire. That's our probe. So the heat emitter is a great tool if you want to keep humidity in cages. Doesn't dry up the air as much as the like an infrared or a spotlight or something like that. And they don't, they hardly ever pop, so they really do very well. They last ages. I mean, this one we haven't changed because the steel box is solid and it's screwed into the wood. We haven't changed this bulb in a, a year and a half. <laughs> I've got some that have been going about, say, seven years and they're still working. They've got normally about 30,000 hours. But uh, these things really do last long, they work very well. But you have to put a cage around them, as if these guys touch it, they can get really bad burns. They can get up to 300 to 500 degrees Celsius, which is extremely hot. But a, a really great option for a cage like this. So they create quite a nice hot pocket, they don't throw the heat as much as an infrared. But still a very great, good option, nice to connect to thermostats. Your infrareds, if you don't have a dimmer, a dimmer stat or, or a thermostat that dims the power, turns it on off, on off all the time, your lower wattage bulbs can pop quite often. So, I think we've got uh, it's just a hundred watt. Yeah, this guy's going crazy here. <laughs> Shame. Okay, let's just close up and give him a break, and then. Uh, uh, just more bit about his venom. Obviously you guys can research that topic a little more. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. So obviously I'm thinking more cyto but there can be hemotoxic properties. Venoms are made up of multiple things so it just might be the majority of it is hemotoxin or cyto. Okay but with this watching anything on YouTube and that just take a lightly don't believe everything you watch you can make up your own mind about these videos cool so, so that's our cottonmouth water moccasin we'll leave him in peace now and get a meal soon <laughs>